Nearly a day hasn't gone by without the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement against Israel making headline news. משרד האוצר מתריעים מתוצאות חרם כלכלי על ישראל שיביא לפגיעה ברמת החיים ולאלפי מפוטרים. מהצד השני יש מי שאומרים שכלכלת ישראל חזקה מספיק כדי להתמודד עם חרם אירופי נרחב, אז מי צודק? אנשי עסקים מובילים פונים אל ראש הממשלה נתניהו ולוחצים לקידום הסדר מדיני. הם קוראים לראש הממשלה נתניהו לקדם הסדר מדיני, מזהירים מפני חרם כלכלי, נאמר שלום לאיש העסקים, יושב ראש לוריאל ישראל, גד פרופר, שלום לך. ערב טוב. יש לא מעט פרסומים על חרם אירופי, אתה בחברה בינלאומית גדולה מאוד. כמה אתם מרגישים באמת הלחץ הזה להסדר מדיני? הלחץ מבחוץ ישנו. יש חברות באירופה, בארצות הברית, בעולם המערבי, שמדברות על כך שהן רוצות לראות את המצב במזרח התיכון שקט. The movement called BDS for short is the latest and most organized call by Palestinian civil society for a boycott of Israel until its occupation of the West Bank and Gaza ends, the refugees that displaced are allowed to return, and the Palestinians inside Israel are granted equal rights to Jews. The central founder of the movement is Omar Barghouti. This week, the real news sat down with him in the West Bank city of Ramallah. We reached a qualitative leap, if you will, but it's been, the signs have been piling up throughout the last couple of years. In December 2012, the ANC adopted uh, the BDS uh, um, call in its national conference. Uh, throughout 2013, we've had many smaller tipping points for academic associations in the U.S., adopted the academic boycott of Israel, uh, the Teachers Union of Ireland did too, um, many student uh, councils across U.S. campuses adopted divestment from U.S. companies involved in the occupation. But all of these are mostly symbolic actions that basically make organizations that have very little financial influence on Israel take a stand. Now we're seeing actual concrete financial impact. Absolutely. I was moving to the 2014 era when we're starting to see real financial impact. Last month, the Netherlands' largest pension fund management company has decided to withdraw its investments from Israel's five largest banks because they have branches on the West Bank and are involved in financing construction in the settlements. A few weeks earlier, the Dutch water company, Vitens, canceled a contract with Israel's Mekarot water company for similar reasons. And then we saw the German government excluding settlement entities from Uh, scientific cooperation agreements with Israel. We saw the Norwegian pension fund, the largest in the world, excluding Israeli companies from its investments, the largest Danish bank, and so on. So yes, we're into a totally different era with the Dutch pension fund decision to take punitive measures against all Israeli banks involved in the occupied territories. This is very serious because they're adopting the logic that you should punish the criminal, not the crime. The settlements are the crime. The criminal is the state of Israel, and the criminal at a lower level are the banks involved in those crimes, in funding those crimes. It was exactly the blurring of the green line by boycott initiatives that got the Israeli business community anxious. Israel's Channel 2 reported that in recent months, the legal office of Daniel Reisner has become the main address of companies suffering from the boycott. Their leaders woke up one morning and discovered that to do business in Israel comes at a price, even if their headquarters sit in the heart of Tel Aviv. They've lost contracts, got into trouble with their parent companies abroad, and managers even received letters threatening the cancellation of investments, says Reisner. Earlier this month, the Israeli Prime Minister announced he will summon a first-of-its-kind broad meeting of ministers to discuss strategy for how to tackle the boycott. At the moment, Israel's only public strategy is a brand Israel PR campaign run by the foreign ministry. However, at the last minute, the debate was postponed. But the Prime Minister tasked his cabinet to come up with ideas. Minister Naftali Bennett's is simply to find new friends. If European and American markets will demand Israel stand by conditions of their own free trade agreements and respect international law, as those now advocating boycott do, Israel will simply turn elsewhere. <laughs> אודי סגל, יש תחליפים? שמע, עושים שוק. יש את השוק האירופי, זה חשוב, ויש לנו את הקשרים הכי חזקים איתו, ויש סכנה שהם חלק מתכווץ, ויש מגעים של ישראל לחפש חברים חדשים ברחבי הגלובוס, אז אחרי החיבוק לקנדה והקריצה לאוסטרליה, יש חבורה, מועדון חדש, שנקרא Pacific Alliance, קולומביה, מקסיקו, פרו וצ'ילה. 
The Australian reports that Israel has about 40 trade offices, which Bennett is starting to divert from Western Europe towards Asia, with the Sweden office being replaced by one in Hong Kong, and Finland's by one in China. Europe is Israel's number one export market. Having failed to dislodge us with uh, weapons, with armies, with terrorists, with rockets, with missiles, they now think that they'll dislodge us with boycotts. Now, don't take my word for it. The uh, founders of the BDS movement make their goals perfectly clear. They want to see the end of the Jewish state. They're quite explicit about it. And I think it's important that the boycotters must be exposed for what they are. They're classical anti-Semites. Well, the uh, Israeli Strategic Affairs Minister uh, recently asked the Israeli government for 100 million shekels to create a special unit that will deal specifically with the boycott. Uh, now, he said that the work is only partially PR, that in fact most of it uh, is intelligence. They have an extremely powerful army, a massive nuclear uh, weapons arsenal, but they don't know how to combat a nonviolent movement based on human rights. And BDS is such a movement that Israel is really paralyzed in, in confronting. Last June 2013, Israel in fact announced that it has failed in its propaganda efforts to fight BDS. All the attempts to smear, intimidate and bully have failed. So they shifted in June 2013 overall responsibility for fighting BDS from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to the Ministry of Strategic Affairs. And now the Ministry of Strategic Affairs is asking for 100 million shekels to fight BDS. And they're establishing all kinds of reconnaissance, all kinds of intelligence units to spy on Western organizations and Western individuals supporting the BDS movement without a peep from those supposed Western democracies. Another idea came from Minister of Education Daniel Hershkowitz, who created a special fund for academics who were refused grants abroad for boycott reasons. The fund offers a quarter of a million shekels per research. The sum is symbolic as 40% of Israeli research depends on European funds, a total of roughly 3 billion shekels, but with the recent successes of the BDS campaign, researchers are likely to lean more heavily on the Israeli Education Ministry for finance. On February 10th, the Prime Minister finally held a strategic meeting, but instead of inviting most of his ministers, the head of intelligence agencies and members of the judiciary, as the original debate intended, he stuck to three of his most hardline cabinet members. Foreign Affairs Minister Avigdor Lieberman, Minister of the Economy Naftali Bennett, and Minister of Strategic Affairs Yuval Steinitz. Recently, a secretive report came out by the Foreign Ministry uh, that said that about 30% of Israeli companies are going to suffer uh, if the boycott continues. And they estimated that the uh, economic damage overall will be about $20 billion. Uh, we have not read the report, but we've read some leaks in the media about it. And I don't think it's an exaggeration because uh, Who Profits, which is an Israeli project that documents Israeli and international companies operating the OPT, estimate about 80% of Israeli companies are involved somehow in the occupied Palestinian territory, whether the settlements, the wall, the infrastructure, or other aspects of the occupation. So I, I wouldn't uh, doubt that the figures will be drastic. Last month, Minister of Finance Eir Lapid told Israeli Daily Ynet that his ministry has gone through all the various scenarios and determined that if the current situation with the boycott continues, it will hurt the pocket of every Israeli. We are export-leaning, and export is dependent on our position in the world. Israel's head negotiator with the Palestinians, Minister of Justice Tzipi Livni, echoed such comments when she supported U.S. Secretary of State's warning that a failure to reach an agreement would lead to a boycott on steroids. Unlike South Africa during apartheid, Israel does not produce anything that the world cannot live without. They produce products and services that the world can buy elsewhere, usually at cheaper prices, uh, uh, including technological advances and so on, you can get elsewhere. Israel does not have any unique position, although it markets itself as unique, it's really not. It's very dependent on Western technology, especially US technology, and we see a lot of the commercial relations with Israel are ideologically based, not just financially and economically based. If they think BDS managed to grow in Western Europe, where support for Israel was once prevalent, they think we cannot have an effective BDS in India, Brazil, and other global South countries, they are dead wrong. We possess a great treasure. The capacity to innovate is a great treasure of profound economic value in today's world. And that is something that is bigger than all these boycotters could possibly address.
Because people are coming here. The new powers, the old powers and the new powers, uh, <coughs> superpowers, uh, Google, uh, Yahoo, you're not laughing. It's not a laughing matter, it's true. For the real news, I'm Leah Terachansky in Ramallah.